Welcome and thank you for coming out tonight. Um, for me, this is the first event I've come to in the Valley. I've been to several others throughout the city. Uh, but thank you for coming out to remember uh, the events of 9-11. Um, as you've heard before, at 8.46 in the morning uh, on 9-11, uh, our country came under fire. Um, it's, it's probably the first time our country's been under attack. Nearly 3,000 lives were lost. Uh, several of them first responders, a lot of civilians per that perished. And uh, it's hard to imagine 14 years since then what's changed. Um, I, there was a recent statistic I read that said 20% uh, of America was, knew somebody who was impacted by the events of 9-11. And you know, it's, it's really a staggering uh, statistic. Um, those lives were lost forever, but our spirit still remains tough. Uh, much has changed for America, Americans. Uh, we've become reacquainted with war, experienced recession, become more engaged in political debate and divides. Uh, even our air travel's changed. Uh, yet this evening, I'd like to focus a little bit on what has not changed. Uh, our character uh, remains steadfast as a nation. Our faith in God and others remains. Our beliefs in America as a free society and our will to protect our freedom. These beliefs have only strengthened. Hundreds of firefighters, including those from Los Angeles here, your local firefighters on 9-11 uh, and all over the nation went back to New York on that fateful day, shortly after the events, uh, to help their fellow brothers and sisters. Uh, they staffed fire apparatus, they cooked meals, they cleaned the station, they served the local community there, they actually ran calls for them. And this is all at their own expense and their own time, because there's a connection amongst public safeties, uh, public re first responders. The Los Angeles Fire Department also dispatched shortly thereafter our uh, California Task Force uh, FEMA team, which is about a team of 74 firefighters, specially trained, they flew back to New York to help the uh, FDNY with their rescues and um, support their efforts. These demonstrate unique, uh, the unique characteristics of your fire department out here. Tonight you will hear about the 800 pound steel rubble behind me another 100-pound block of limestone that was at the Pentagon in D.C. Uh, these symbols represent pain, terror, despair, triumph, determination, strength that bonded our nation, united our nation stronger than ever. There are only a few of these places in the city that actually have rebel from the actual events of 9-11. One is here. The second one, we had an event this morning at our training center at Frank Hodgkins downtown. And then the third one's actually on the campus of USC. They actually have uh, also some iron that was from the, one of the World Trade Centers. Um, I want to share a personal story, a real brief personal story that happened recently, as recent as last year. Uh, I took my mom and we went back to New York uh, last year around, uh, I don't know, mid-year. And uh, we went, we happened to be there the week before they officially opened up the 9-11 Museum. And I recall outside, um, my mom was somewhat apprehensive about going in there. My mom, uh, who recently retired from FEMA, my mom's in the audience, she's, I'm not going to say her age, but she's beyond 80. Uh, she retired from FEMA, uh, she worked in the recovery section. She actually responded to Katrina, 9-11, uh, and some other events, catastrophes in the United States. So we went back. We actually walked through the museum. We were able to walk through because we were first responders. And my mom's apprehension, I, I didn't understand it quite as much as she did because I did not go back. We walked through, and the, if you haven't been to the museum, you have to go to, to experience it to understand what really occurred. Uh, I realized that my mom, after going through that, she, con she converted her, her, res her um, apprehension kind of dissolved and turned to comfort because there is a section in the museum where uh, the victims, there's pictures, you can hear their stories, and I think my mom made somewhat of a connection there. So it was a very interesting experience for me. Uh, perhaps on this 14th anniversary of 9-11, we are celebrating heroism in the face of disaster and remem remembering the lives of those that were lost. 
we might also want to spend time searching our own selves and asking, what have I learned? Perhaps <clears throat> that would be the most fitting way for us to commemorate this event of today. You think about 9-11, um, we should never forget those, those scared and vulnerable feelings. We should never forget the eerie feeling of so many lives lost. We should never forget the images that we saw on TV of all the heavy black smoke billowing above the skies of Manhattan. We should never forget the feeling, the bolstered sense of unity and pride of Americans that came to their aid. We should never forget seeing the <coughs> courageous actions of many men and women. We should never forget seeing the first responders from across the nation come together and unite. We should never forget seeing what hate can destroy, and we should never forget what love and unity can heal. We should never forget. Thank you.